You're now watching the Mike Missanelli Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Mike Missanelli Podcast on a Thursday, December 28th, a couple of days removed from Christmas, a little later in the show. I'm going to bring you a Christmas dilemma on getting a gift that you really don't appreciate. But that's way down on the priority list for today's podcast because we've got another Eagles game. And we know what the circumstances are. It's all clear. It's laid out for everybody who's an Eagle fan, who follows the Eagles nationally. The Eagles need to win their last two games. If they do, they are going to be the number two seed. They play the Cardinals this week. It should not be a problem. They are, uh, what, a double-digit favorite in this game, just like they were last week. Uh, But here is the subplot of this game. I don't even know if it's a subplot because I never really got that seriously into the Jonathan Gannon thing. Uh, I thought he was kind of a carpetbagger, and he came here, and he actually did have a pretty high-ranked defense. Uh, he was not an aggressive defensive coordinator, but here he comes back to Lincoln Financial Field as the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. There are a lot of people that I hear out there go, wow, like Jonathan Gannon really changed the style. He's a lot more aggressive. And I'm going, eh, well, yeah. They, they, the Cardinals have won three games this year. And I looked at the stats. They're ranked 27th on defense. They give up 363 yards a game. They're 12th against the pass. I guess that's good. But they're 32nd last in the league against the run. So I don't know where Jonathan Gannon is impressing anybody in Arizona. The question is, are the Arizona Cardinals good enough to come in here and upset the Eagles and upset the whole finish for what we think the Eagles are going to do? And it's, that's a, a prohibitive no. They, 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 they're not going to be good enough to, the only chance they have to win this game is that Kyler Murray goes off on an all world tangent and they can't catch him. And he runs for uh, a couple touchdowns. And he, when he's running, he makes a great scramble throw for a touchdown. Like all these unlikely things would have to happen for the Cardinals to come in here and upset the Philadelphia Eagles. So I, I have absolutely no worries that uh, the the Eagles will win this game and we'll move on to the final game of the year, which also should be a win. And these last two games, as we talked about after the Monday night Christmas game, the last two games will give me a lot of information on how well this Eagle team is playing. Even though they're playing inferior opponents, you kind of know when a team is back-clicking. And so these last two games I'm looking at as, we'll see if they're back-clicking, because the only thing that matters to any of us is that whether they're a viable playoff run team. And by that, I mean, are they capable of getting to the NFC title game? I I don't expect that they're going to win that game, but getting there, to me, is in question. And it was never in question earlier. But we've seen these teams in the last couple of weeks, and we're going, now it's in question. They could lose to anybody. They could lose in the first round of the Rams. They could certainly lose in the second round of the Lions. But what they can't do is lose to the Arizona Cardinals and the New York Giants in the last two games and mess up their seeding for the playoffs. So let's look at the Cardinals. Um, they beat Dallas the third game of the year. I don't know how they pulled that off, but they beat the Cowboys 28-16. to They beat the Falcons after losing 8 of 9. They had lost 8 of 9, and then they beat the Steelers on a game that I had called, by the way. It's one of my picks on the Bet Rivers picks of the week, 24-10. Uh, to and then last week, they lost to the, uh, the surging uh, Bears of Chicago. Um, all right, so what do they have? We know what they have. They have yeah, okay receivers. They have Hollywood Brown. They have Rondale Moore. They have Trey McBride's a nice tight end. They have James Conner. Eh, consistent player, but not a guy who's going to light you up. Uh, so what can they do uh, to beat the Eagles? Well, they would have to score a lot of points because their defense isn't very good, uh, which means the Eagles should be able to score points in this game. And they should be able to put a 35 piece on the Arizona Cardinals and win this game like 35 to 17, which is what I would expect to happen. And then we'll have the conversation after that game. Oh, are they back to being the old Eagles? Now you got to temper that conversation by saying they just beat the Cardinals. But I know a lot of fans will go, they're back. And then they'll beat the Giants in the submission the last game of the year. And people will get really excited about their position in the playoffs. And we'll follow that as we go on. But again, even if they win these last two games, they're not going to be able to dazzle me enough because the opponent is inferior. They're not going to be able to dazzle me enough to think that because they beat the Cardinals and the Giants in the last two games of the year, that all of a sudden they're a viable playoff contender and they're going to smite the Los Angeles Rams in the first round. And they're going to take care of the Detroit Lions in the second round, which will be a home game. 
And then they're going to go to San Francisco and play a hell of a game and have a chance to get into the Super Bowl. Do I believe that's going to happen? No, I don't. And I don't know if uh, I see anything in these last two games that's going to convince me of that. So it's a week-to-week proposition for me. Once they get into the playoffs, if they look really good against the Rams, I'm going, okay, well, this is playoff pressure now, and they look good. It's not the Giants in the last game of the year. So maybe they have a chance to beat Detroit next week. And if they do that, I go, wow, that's pretty impressive, but they're still not going to beat the 49ers. So I hate to be a bitch for the people out there, but I just don't believe that something miraculous can happen where the Eagles would actually go to the Super Bowl. But that's beside the point. Um, Let's look at um, what we have here with the Philadelphia Eagles and the uh, Cowboys. Now, last week, Cole Komet, the tight end for the Bears, had 170 yards against the Cardinals, which tells you that in the middle of their defense, not that good. So they have an advantage here with the tight end who can balance what they're going to do with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. So that's all good. This is why I think they can roll up a lot of points. They also can't stop the run. They did run up DeAndre Swift last week a lot more than they had been running him. They had 92 yards for him. You have to be an idiot to come into this game as the offensive coordinator and not make the run a priority against this team. Now we'll see what happens because normally what happens is somehow the Cardinals will score the first touchdown of the game and they'll start panicking and throw the ball instead of getting a well-balanced attack to get the ball up and down the field because you have plenty of time to beat this team, okay? You get down 7 nothing. it's not the end of the world. All right, so, um, and again, I said Carly, Kyler Murray has to go completely off. He, he's not reliable enough right now where you can say he's going to go off and beat the Eagles. So I, I'm, this is kind of like uh, you know, anti-climactic game for me. You know, Jonathan, it's not enough of a subplot for me to get jazzed up. About this game, uh, I'm just looking at whether they can actually beat somebody in the submission, which would get us to the next step and say, well, maybe they've reclaimed the mojo. So let me bring in producer Darren here. Uh, Darren, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals. I said St. Louis Cardinals. They should, they should be playing in St. Louis. The Arizona Cardinals. St. Louis Cardinals. You remember the, uh, who was the quarterback? Jim Hart? Neil Lomax. Jim Hart, Leo, Leo, uh, uh, Neil, Lomax. Neil Lomax. They had a kicker who kicked straight on back in the day. You're probably too young to remember. His name was Jim Bakken. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they're at, they're in the game. Arizona Cardinals right now. What kind of a chance do you give them to beat the Eagles? <laughs> you know, on one side, I, I say uh, no game is a gimme right now with this team. But th- the Cardinals have nothing. I'm looking at their, their. I was looking at their stats for the last couple of days, and they have. There's nobody to prepare for. If you're a defensive coordinator, there's nobody that really scares you. Um, defensively or offensively, yeah, that's great. They give up a lot of uh, uh, yards to the tight end. The Eagles don't throw to the tight end anymore. They forgot about the tight end. They don't throw between. Well, the he numbers. caught seven balls last week. Uh, well, they don't throw between the numbers enough for me. Okay. Do it in spurs. They used Goddard last week, which was which was one of the reasons I like this game because I think they'll use them against this weak tight end defense. Yeah, I, they certainly should. The last time they played a team that was this bad against the a tight end was the Rams, and Goddard had a huge game. Um, so yeah, maybe they do go that route. Uh, Mike, look, they, there's nothing that they can do in these last two weeks to give me confidence because they're playing a couple tomato cans, and. You know, you're right about the Giants next week. They're going to have their, you know, their golf bags uh, in their car before that game even starts. So uh, there's nothing they could show. There's nothing. They could win this game 42 to 10 on Sunday. It won't impress me because this team is terrible. Kyler Murray is not even a good quarterback. He doesn't throw the ball well. He's not accurate. He can run around and scramble. and That's great. That's literally the only thing that they have to worry about on Sunday, this defense. This defense that can't get home to save their lives with the defensive lineman. So, uh, yeah, you know, they're going to win the game. They're, they're going to cover the 10 and I think it's up to 10 and a half now. It opened at nine and a half, went right up to 10 and a half. They're going to cover that number. They're going to beat them pretty handily because, you know, this is the worst team probably they're playing all season. But I'm not going to be impressed and I'm not going to feel any more confident because, you know, I, again, there's too many things to fix on this team right now. By the way, I'm doing this podcast. I want you to check out this hoodie I have. I got for Christmas. Oh, that's dynamite. Yeah. Old that Spectrum. Dynamite? The old Spectrum. Uh, all right, so uh, I get what you're saying. Now, let's let's look at the quarterback here. Um, 
we're, we're, I don't know. Are we in denial? Jalen Hurts, I'm going to say it flat out. Jalen Hurts looks a little like a stunad these days. Uh, and last week, you, you can tell, like, when a guy doesn't make a heady play, like go out of bounds, he's not processing the situation. And if you're not processing the situation as a quarterback, you're a little stunad. Not to mention the fact that he's missing open receivers and locking in on certain guys. And we can look at, you can isolate many plays. And the one that stands out, you had Devontae Smith wide open before A.J. Brown, who was past Devontae Smith. He didn't even look at Devontae Smith. He had his eyes zeroed in on A.J. Brown. He's been doing that a lot where he's missing guys that are open. DeAndre Swift in the flat. Devontae Smith, the underneath pattern with A.J. Brown, the deep pattern. He's not looking at that kind of thing. So I don't know what's happened to him. Uh, I don't want to get into a position where, where idiots, uh, national pundits go, he can't read defenses. That's BS because he read it last year. What is he scrambling with right now in his head? I don't know. But it's a telltale sign that when you don't make a fundamental play, that you don't know the circumstances of that play where you could easily go out of bounds and preserve your chance to score points and somehow you turn it back in when you've got no timeouts left. And the only reason you get a chance to kick a field goal is because of a bonehead delay a game penalty where the guy snatched the ball. I mean, that's just flat out dumb luck. If that guy doesn't do that, what are we talking about? One of the bonehead plays that Jalen Hurts has ever made. But because they got the three, because they won the game, we, we uh, skirt over it. But uh, he is not the quarterback that we saw last year. And uh, I don't know if he can get it back at this point. Now, he's had four straight games where his rating has been 90 or below. Now, that's not exceptional because we were used to seeing him uh, have, have really big quarterback ratings. Four games in a row, he's 90 or less. Uh, he has uh, – now, last week, he, he did throw for a, a, a good amount of yards. He had 301 last week. He did hit all three receivers, but he's also had two turnovers in three straight games. So – uh I, listen, I don't know what to think of him right now. He's got two games to figure it out before they get in the playoffs. So I'll ask you, Darren, what is wrong with Jalen Hurts? Well, I, this is one thing I want to add, too. Like, the offense is a lot more, I hate to use this expression, dumbed down than last year. It's, it's far more simple than it was last year. Uh, and, and the fact that he's not seeing things and locking in on guys, I mean, there's just not a lot of confidence he has in what he's seeing. And that's that's a problem. And that, you know, when a, when I see a quarterback who basically has the same personnel go backwards like that year over year, it's a coaching thing because he's probably being taught to look for for different things than he's used to, and and or maybe things that he doesn't like to to look for. And I know that sounds like a lot of like vague speech, but like if he's at the line of scrimmage and he's expecting to see, he he's expecting if. There's no pre-snap motion. There's not a whole lot of you know complicated scheme here. So he's going to his first guy without even looking through his progression. That's a that's a he's not being taught to do that, and and he's being told to go to those routes. You don't just say after you know you don't just after you want after a successful year you don't just go I'm not going to go through my progression anymore. I'm just going to go. No, he's being taught that's where they want to throw the ball on that play. And, you know, if I hear the offensive coordinator say one more time, we just got to get more explosive plays. No, that's not what you need. This team needs rhythm. I, I sound like a broken record every week. They, they make the same mistakes every week. Uh, and and that's, that's coaching, man. That's just unimaginative coaching. There's no scheme right now. And I, I don't right. know what's, what, uh, that's the only thing I think he's being coached wrong. That's the only thing I can tell you is, is what's wrong with him. There's nothing wrong with him physically. His knee is fine. All right, one other thing in the Eagles' favor, because I hear a lot of people nationally go, oh, my God, they gave up 25 points to the Giants. They didn't give up 25 points to the Giants. Come on, let's break it down. They, they, the Giants scored on a pick six and a 14-yard drive based on a turnover, and then they gave up the seven on the bomb to Slayton. All right, I'll give them that. But it wasn't like the Giants' offense put up 25 points against the Eagles. So that's a misnomer, and I wish people would. See, this is the difference between national people that look at a final score and Eagle fans who live every snap. You know, you can't say something like, oh, my God, the Eagles gave up 25 points to the Giants. They didn't. Come on. All right. Let's move on to the Sixers. So so basically, I've got the Eagles winning 35-17. And, and I'm not even sure that, that you know, like it might be 13 for the Cardinals. I don't even know if they can score 17 points. 
Uh, and then Gannon will limp out of here and, you know, we'll move on to the next game. Are you seeing a final score like that? Yeah, it's this. It won't be close. I, I don't. I think even if the Eagles make mistakes like they made against the Giants, that the Cardinals w- wouldn't even capitalize on them. So yeah, I see a very similar score. It's going to be like thirty-six to thirteen, uh, and I'm not going to feel good <laughs> about the team. So, All right. So don't worry about this week, and don't worry about the. I don't even know why we're doing the podcast on the Eagles, frankly, for the next two weeks. They're going to be W's. I think it counts to the playoffs when they started. Uh, but we're here to serve. All right. It is the Mike Missinelli Cop Podcast. It's brought to you by the great people at Bet Rivers. As you can see right behind me, uh, Bet Rivers. Uh, we got some great picks coming up in a little bit on the Bet Rivers app. Sixers, you got to talk about the Sixers because they were on a Florida trip without Embiid. And last night they won their first game without Joel in the lineup as they beat the uh, Orlando Magic, an up and coming team. And I'm watching the game last night, and they go, you know, the Magic has surprised a lot of people. They've got a lot of good young players, but they're like still green bananas. You know, they're not completely ripe last night. And so the Sixers' depth wore them down a little bit last night. It was a good win for the Sixers without Embiid. Uh, The previous game wasn't so good because the Heat, without Jimmy Butler, beat the Sixers without Embiid, uh, and they still hadn't had a win without Joel Embiid. And in that game, Jaime Hawkes. They're all excited about Jaime Hawkes down there in Miami at 31 against the Sixers. So they win one uh, last night. They they lose one. Uh, and again, this is, again, we're, we're talking about the Sixers and the season that just goes on, and we have to learn more about them. Now, we're almost into the new year now, uh, and the Sixers think they have enough players to contend. Um, I, I think they got enough players to make it interesting. Their depth is a lot better than it has been in the past several years. But is good depth enough to beat a better starting team that you're going to face when you play Milwaukee and when you're going to play the uh, Boston Celtics, who are just tripping out right now? The Boston Celtics are a juggernaut right now. All right, so uh, we'll continue to follow the Sixers. The Sixers, interestingly enough, they don't get that that head headwind until the Eagles peter out. So uh, I th- I'm, I'm assuming the Eagles will peter out a little uh, earlier this year. And then we'll be in total Sixer mode. So Sixers, we're not shortchanging you. Right now, you're down in priority list. Uh, that's a shame, but that's the way it works. All right. Uh, my picks of the week, I'm going to go with the Cotton Bowl. Ohio State, without their starting quarterback, started out as a six-and-a-half-point favorite over Missouri. It is now down to plus three. Oh, I'm smelling Mizzou. Outright in the Cotton Bowl. All right, let's move on to the NFL. Uh, I'm taking uh, these two games based on one team being so much better than the other and uh, the other on a, a bounce back week. Uh, the Lions are in Dallas. Now, the Lions are pretty damn good, right? They've established themselves as a pretty good team at what they did last week. They're a six and a half point underdog in Dallas. Well, I got to think the Cowboys want to come back and erase the memories of that bad game of theirs last week. I'm going to take the Cowboys minus six and a half, and I'm going to take the Rams, who are finding their way into the playoffs against the lousy New York Giants. It almost seems like a gift. The Rams minus four and a half at the Giants, where they're going to start Tyrod Taylor and probably pull him at halftime and put in uh, uh, Tommy Cutlets in that game. Uh, also, other games you want to look at, I think the, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars at minus six and a half versus the lousy Panthers is a good way to go. The Dolphins and the Ravens. Dolphins are plus three and a half at the Ravens. I don't. I would stay away from that game. That's too close to call. What do you got, Darren? Uh, I got two games for you. Uh, the Bucks are playing pretty well right now, uh, and the Saints are just a brutal team. Uh, any good players they have are in are injured reserve. Uh, Tampa's only uh, get, only has to cover two and a half in New Orleans. I'm going to take the Bucks minus two and a half at the Saints. And the other game, I think Minnesota's starting like their third or fourth string quarterback. Some guy never heard his name before. Packers minus one at Minnesota. Back that's the eight that's the eight thirty game Sunday night. There's no Monday night game this week because of what is that, New Year's Day or New all the bowl games. So yeah, so no Packers are minus one. So Packers won at Minnesota. Um Bucks minus two and a half at home, sorry, against the Saints. And Packers uh, minus one 
at Mini. All righty. And that's time for us to end the Mike Maselli podcast for today. Again, Eagles and Arizona Cardinals. Don't sweat it. It's a double-digit cover win for the Philadelphia Eagles. And then we move on to the final game of the year. And then we judge on how worthy they are for a playoff run. You can reach me uh, email-wise, mike at mikemiss.com. You can check me out on Twitter at mikemiss25. Don't forget to look into uh, Natalie Vineyards, the, my my vineyard in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. If you're looking for some bottles of wine for the New Year's, if you're down in that area, grab some reds and whites. We will tell you, our, our Vinter is winning a lot of awards for the wines we're producing down there. We're very proud of it uh, right now. Uh, and also, if you need a Cameo shout-out, just go to Cameo.com. I'll give you a personalized shout-out. And uh, I put a lot of effort into it. So uh, have a great weekend, everybody. We will uh, talk to you on Monday with our post-Eagles game report on the Mike Missinelli podcast brought to you by Bet Rivers. Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.